Hi guys, and welcome to this video on grouped data. Yes, fabulous to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Darren, otherwise known as Masguru, and it is so awesome seeing you today. Now, what is this video? It's a year nine video de delaying, uh, detailing or dealing with, he says, getting his teeth in. Wow with some group data, histograms, bar charts, how we can read them, what information we can extract from them. So hopefully you're in the right place here for this video. If you are new to my channel, can you do me a massive favor? There is a arrow over there pointing to a doohickey in the corner, which will basically subscribe you to my channel. And if you can do that, it would be greatly appreciated. And if you could find some friends to do it as well, even more appreciation will come your way. Um, I'm actually just one person sitting in a room here, very small person trying to do a pretty large job doing all of the videos for all of maths. Um, it's a little bit stressful, but I love doing it. Well, I love doing it when you subscribe. Now, what are we dealing with today? Group data, yes, thank you very much. By the end of this uh, particular lesson, hopefully you'll know what it means to group data, why we would group data, what a frequency table is, what a histogram is, know the difference between a histogram and a bar chart, and also know what the term interval means. Now, a lot of this has already been covered in a previous video at a year eight level, so some of this is very much a recap. The great thing about maths is sometimes we hit things over and over again to actually help you get better and better and better. So uh, as I say, from part of the previous video, we looked at sort of sometimes the data we're dealing with has a very large spread, or in fact, there's lots and lots of data. Trying to do a, a dot plot or a stem and leaf diagram with lots and lots of data actually is, is really hard and it takes a long, long time. It also doesn't necessarily give us a nice pretty picture of what it is we're expecting or what we're looking for, okay? So when we have lots and lots of data items, we try and group them together. We try and actually say, well, rather than having each individual data item have its own value, why don't we look and try and draw an, a, a sort of chart on a graph to describe how many numbers in total are between zero and 10, and how many numbers in total are between 10 and 20. And that's what we mean by grouping the data. We're, we're actually losing some of the information, but to give us an idea of sort of graphs. Now we've met histograms previously, and this, ladies and gentlemen, is a wonderful example of a histogram. Yes, and what we notice is that we have individual numbers underneath each of my bars. Now, that's one very specific case of a histogram. In this situation, we're not grouping my data. We're going to say, well, hold on a moment. We know that uh, zero can have its own bar. We don't need to group the data. The most things we asked people were gave me an answer of four. So, for example, I might be out there saying to people, can you tell me how many kids you've got? It's highly unlikely that someone out there will have had 100 children. At least I hope not, because that would be exhausting. Can you imagine 100 children? Anyway, so on the whole, the responses might have been no children, one children, two children, three children, or four children, yes? Nice, easy for us to say, well, okay, we'll give no children a bar, one child a bar, two child a bar. But when we're looking at scores, for example, maybe we've done a test recently with a group of students, and the top score was out of 50. Well, there it's very hard to give each bar its own number. Because if you think about it, our lowest number would be zero, and our highest number would be 50. And you'd end up with some very small bars. It wouldn't tell us information. But when we group them, and that's what this means, so when we've got these numbers here sitting between the lines, that means there's grouped data. It's all been grouped together. With regard to the numbers below, what this bar now stands for is zero to nine. This bar here stands for 10 to 19. This bar here stands for 20 to 29, 30 to 39, and to buck the trend, that one actually stands from 40 to, well, really 49, but we actually have 50 there to finish the interval off. So what we're saying is the interval here is actually 10 for each, because I'm going up in 10s, 20s, 30s, 40s. Getting these intervals right is actually really, really important. Yeah, and oh, generally speaking, questions or we'll try and help you with the intervals here. So it's important to know that the difference between a histogram and a bar chart is, well, a histogram deals with numerical data, a bar chart deals with categorical data. That's the first big one. But the histograms have no gaps between the bars. Okay, bar charts have gaps, histograms, the bars are literally stuck together. And if we just scroll up, do you see any gaps between those bars? No, so there we go. Now we talked about intervals just a second ago, yes? And that's where we group between certain numbers. And there are two different ways of doing the, uh, the intervals. 
And sadly, lots of people make silly mistakes because they don't think about what the intervals actually mean. So if we look at this table here with some intervals 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 30, uh, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, can you see what the problem is? Well, if I, for example, gave you my age as 25, we knew we would know that 25 fits between 20 and 30. If I gave you 37, I know that it would go in there. The problem with this is that if I told you my age was 10, where would you put it? Because what you're saying is there are actually two intervals with 10 in it. So writing it like this is actually fairly bad. How can we write it better? We actually do it like this. And we actually miss off this last number here. And we go zero with a line, 10 and a line, because we know that any number that includes zero and effectively nine, any number between zero and nine in this case will go in that interval. Any number between zero and 9.9, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, So basically any number from zero up to, but not including 10 will fit in this first box here. And I think that makes life so much better. Now, drawing a histogram is awesome. Once we know what the general shape is, we can construct one, but we need some data. Now, how do we do this? Well, be able to do the data and create a histogram, we need to know the intervals. And again, as I say many times, questions will give you the intervals. And here's an example. So Cambridge uh, Central Textbook Series, thanks Cambridge for letting me use your questions. Greatly appreciated. We have data that shows the number of hamburgers sold each hour by a 24 hour fast food store during a 50 hour period. So what they did was they basically sat there for 50 hours and someone's counted hamburgers. I can think of nothing worse, but whole new discussion. So there is my 50 hour period. It says set up and complete a grouped frequency table. Right, so what on earth is a grouped frequency table? Well, making this smaller so that it all fits into my uh, screen, what do I see? Well, first things first, let's read the question. Set up and complete a group frequency table using the class interval, zero line, five line, 10 line. Hold on a moment, I understand what that means now. I know that that means go zero two, five two, 10 two, 15 two, yes. And so what we can notice is I've already started to complete my table or filled in some of my table. There are my class intervals, zero two, five two, 10 two, 15 two. What the question didn't tell me was where to stop. Well, that's all right. I, I'm just going to look for the biggest number. And what did I see my biggest number is in amongst all of this? Well, 24 seems to be the biggest one there. And that's why we've gone 20 to 25. Because my intervals have to be five, I can't finish that at 24. It has to finish at 25. Right, okay, so we've got that. Thank you very much. What do I do now? Well, having got that all set up, I now need to transfer that data into my tally chart. And I've literally in this situation created a tally chart. Surprisingly, a lot of the textbooks don't ask you to do a tally chart. And I'm like, why not? It makes life easier. So the first thing I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna work across my table and everywhere I see a line or every set where I see a number, I'm gonna put it in the right place. So one, here's my tally, thank you very much. 10, here's my tally, cause it goes in there. Then 18, yes, that's gonna go in there. Then 14 which is gonna go in here. Oh, nearly got that wrong. 20 goes in here. 11 goes in here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carry this on and I will see you back in just a moment. And there we go, there's my table filled in. Now what you've noticed is I've obviously crossed off all those numbers individually and I hope and pray and hope and hope and hope that I've got all the numbers here. What you noticed was actually my tally chart uh, over RAM. I didn't make my boxes bigger. Now that's no big deal, it's no big issue, it's not a problem. What I'm now gonna do is look at my frequency column. And what does frequency mean? It means the total of, yes. So what I now do is I just say, well, here we go. We've got three there. We've got seven there. We seem to have 15 there. We've got, what is that, 5, 10, 15, 19 there, and six there. And ladies and gentlemen, I have got lots and lots of information to help me create my histogram. Now the question says here, Oh, that's annoying. It says include a percentage frequency column. What on earth does it mean by percentage frequency column? Well, exactly that, believe it or not. The question here says create a column that is titled percentage frequency. How do we work out our percentage frequency using a formula? And it says here to find out the percentage frequency, take our original frequency, divide it by the total, and then times it by 100. So if I go back and just copy my numbers down, what did I have? Three, seven, 
So we've got 3, 7, 15, 19, and 6. All right, so zoom up and let's make it a little bit bigger so that everyone can see what's going on. All right, I've already done the tally, I don't need to do that, but let's check my total. 10, 25, 31, 41, 50. Well, that was good. We now know that all of these numbers, when I add them together, give me 50. Why is it good that they give me 50? Because the question gave me 50 pieces of information. If I got 51 there, I've made a mistake. There's no point continuing the question. Sadly, you'd have to go back and do it again. Right, so percentage frequency says, take the frequency. Well, let's deal with this first number here. Let's deal with three. Let's take the frequency, divide it by the total, and times it by 100. Three divided by 50 times 100. Now, obviously, there's many ways of doing this. You can use your calculator. You, you may already know this. But I now know that that is 6%. If you don't know why, just put into your calculator. Three divided by 50 times 100, it will give you six. This one here happens to be 14%. 30%, 38%, and 12%, which when I add all those together, I will guarantee you gives me 100%, which is good, because that's what we want. Now, again, don't think that the shortcut is always to double these values. And I know that's what I did in my head, but there's a very specific reason it relates to this 50 and this 100. My advice to you is if you don't know how to do this, use the formula and your calculator. Right, we've got the information. So now we can construct our frequency histogram. Now, the funny thing is there, the question actually says frequency histogram. It doesn't say percentage frequency histogram. And so I have to be very, very careful now to make sure that the histogram I draw is correct. Although it wanted that table of percentage frequency, maybe we'll use that later. So here we go. Here is my axes drawn. Up the side here, I have frequency. Along the bottom, I'm going to have my class intervals, my width. Now, if you remember, this starts at 0 and finishes at 25. So 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25. Right, so how high is my first column? It has a frequency of 3, and so I'm going to have to do 3. But hold on a moment, Maths Guru, you haven't got a scale. No, I haven't, but so I now know that my highest frequency is 19. So I'm going to go up to 20. So there is 20, there is 10. So, oh, this is, so this is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. Now, I know this is incredibly small. You'll be able to do better in your books and what have you. So, we now are going to draw a frequency from 0 to 5 that is 3 high. So, there we go. 0 to 5. How do we know it's 0 to 5? Because it's 0, but it can't include 5, and it's 3 high. The next one I'm going to plot, my next bar is going to be 7 high. So we're going to extend that up to there. We're going to go across. And again, you would do this so much neater than me because you've got squares. Then we want 15. Where's 15 going to be? It's there. So boing, boing, boing. There we go. That one's 15 high. Slightly missed my mark there. 19 high is the next one. A uh, little bit of cross shading to make it look pretty. And the final one is six high. And so there we go, six high there. Ladies and gentlemen, am I finished? Not quite, because I've got to make sure that my frequency histogram has all the right information on it. So this one here would be number of hamburgers sold, or hamburgers sold. And we would have a title here that says histogram to show and then number of hamburgers sold. There we go, ladies and gentlemen, I am almost finished, but we're gonna answer some questions. So the question says, now use the histogram to answer the questions. One, how many hours did the fast food store sell fewer than 10 hamburgers? So for how many hours did the, ha uh, the store sell fewer than 10 hamburgers? We now know that fewer than 10 hamburgers, that arrow points to 10 hamburgers, fewer than, means less than, and so what we need to do is count all of the bars, the height of those bars to tell me how many. Well, we knew that that was seven, and we knew that was three, and so seven plus three is 10, and so 10 hours. 10 of those hours, they, they actually sold less than 10 hamburgers. Whoa, obviously nighttime. Who drives around trying to buy hamburgers? B, at least 15 hamburgers. Now, at least means, you know, it can include 15 or higher. So if we now look at where 15 is, it's there. 
and we're looking for the bars that actually add up to the right of that arrow. So we knew that this one here was 19, we knew this one here was 7, and so adding those together would give me 26 hours. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of this particular lesson. What did we learn? We learned about group data. We learned that we group data to try and make it fit nicer scale, right? We use intervals to try and actually squeeze the data together to make it look better on graphs. We knew the difference between a histogram and a bar chart. Bar charts are for categorical. Histograms are for numerical. Histograms have no gaps. And we know how to read them off. I'm pretty much done. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. If you have enjoyed the video, do me a favor, leave a comment below and say, yo, love the video, really helpful, and that would be greatly appreciated. Otherwise, there is a circly thing over there for you to click and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Again, ask a couple of friends, that would be greatly appreciated. Otherwise, below it is a video loading for you on the same sort of work. Hopefully you enjoy it. I'm Darren Masguru, signing off. Have an awesome day. I look forward to seeing you again. Take care, bye.